Hey everybody, Jeff here from Outseta. Today I wanted to talk to you about self-management. So self-management is an organizational design that we have adopted at Outseta that is quite different from how your typical SaaS business or really any business operates. Um, and what self-management is most commonly known for is being a flat organization. There's no hierarchy, there's no bosses at Outseta whatsoever. Uh, and the company that's probably most famous or that's been popularized for adopting the structure the most um, is Zappos, the, the shoe company. They're sort of a famous example of a company that has employed um, sort of one flavor of self-management. But I wanted to tell you a little bit today about why we've adopted the structure within our business um, and hint, hint, it has very little to do with the idea of no bosses. But the overarching premise of uh, self-management is there is no hierarchy in the business and we go out and we hire the best possible people that we can find and then we sort of set them free and allow them to contribute to the company in the areas where they're most interested and able. So for me, my background is in marketing. I spend a lot of time on marketing because that's where I can help the most. You know, I'm not a developer, so I don't build the software. And we just kind of give everybody flexibility to gravitate towards the areas of the business that interest them most and where they're best able to help. But more than anything, self-management for us is about enabling autonomous decision-making. Uh, we want our employees to be able to go out and act without feeling like they need approval of a boss. Um, and a really key aspect here is in order to empower your employees to act autonomously, they need to have all information about the business so that they have a complete picture. So transparency is very much a prerequisite to enabling that sort of autonomous decision making. Finally, we're latching onto the idea that influence uh, is earned rather than assigned via a title. So if you want to earn influence at Outsider, you need to come in and consistently demonstrate excellent decision making. That's how you're going to earn influence in the organization. It's not assigned to you because you have a director or VP level title. You sort of earn influence amongst your peers by consistently demonstrating great work. Now, in order to make all of this happen, there's definitely some prerequisites that are important and that you need to have in place. I'd say self-management is generally a better fit for companies that are building for the long term. If your objective is to build a company for a couple of years and flip it, this probably isn't an organizational uh, structure that's going to work for you. And as part of that, the second prerequisite is really having a strong sense of the values that guide the company. When everyone is kind of out and empowered to make decisions, there need to be guardrails in place that drive that decision making. It's not a single person or, you know, a small group of people with large titles that are making decisions. So you need to have uh, values that really guide um, the decision making processes that the company uses. Third, there's this aspect of belief in trust over control. You need to believe that people can be treated like adults, that people can um, have a sense of personal ownership over their work. And you just have to be a trusting person. You're going to lose an aspect of control with self-management, but the idea is in trusting your team, giving them that sense of personal ownership. Um, they are actually going to show up and be more motivated and do better work than if they had a boss sort of assigning them work and looking over their shoulder and that sort of thing. So the question we always get about self-management is, okay, this sounds haphazard. Um, how are decisions actually made if you're empowering autonomous decision-making? And the short answer there is there's sort of two things that are encouraged when it comes to anyone making a decision. The first is that they seek advice of experts. So people generally make decisions around the area of the business that they are an expert in, but we always encourage them to go out and talk to other experts just to get other expert perspectives on any significant decision. And likewise, we encourage them to discuss the decision with anybody that the decision directly uh, impacts. So if you kind of have those stakeholders, the idea is the person who's best suited to make the decision is making the decision. They've gotten advice from experts. They've talked to the people that the, the decision affects. And then they've got free reign to sort of make decisions because they have all the information about the business already. Um, rather than sort of looking to a boss or whatnot to make a decision on their behalf. Self-management's worked really, really well for us. I think 
Uh, our team is motivated by it. Our team moves faster because of it. Um, it's certainly smaller to adopt or easier, excuse me, to adopt in the context of a small team than a larger organization. Uh, but we're really excited about the personal freedoms and sort of work environment that self-management fosters and are excited to see how much further we can scale out SETA as a self-managed company.